Greetings, my dear viewers, and welcome to Make Salem Great Again, the playlist about a game that I used to play a lot until it happened. First of all, let me explain what this is, though. Town of Salem is a multiplayer game that features secret roles and relies heavily upon deduction. It is kind of a combination of the two analog games of Mafia that you might know and Werewolves, or for my German viewers, Werwölfe von Düsterwald, which is a popular real-life game where you get together with your friends and everyone gets a secret role and you have to figure out whether your friends are actually in your team or the enemy team. Now, Town of Salem uh, grabs these features and adds a few more extra roles, which was the main reason why I liked it so much, because every single player has a unique role and can actively help their team to win or to lose if they are bad. Now, I will add to this and give you a proper explanation how this game works and which kind of different roles are actually featured in this game in a different extra video that I will add in a few seconds. If you want to skip this because you already know this game, then you might just click on the uh, little annotation up in the corner. If you don't see an annotation, that is because you disabled them. Okay, let's take a look at how to actually play this game. At the beginning of each match, every player gets a random secret role and that has to work towards either an individual goal or towards a shared goal with their community or their faction. There are three of these factions. First of all, of course, the good guys, called town members. Second of all, the bad guys, which are members of the Mafia. And third of all, every other role which is considered a neutral role. It's a bit difficult to call them a faction of their own because they don't really work together, but sometimes they can work together with a different faction in order to win. Plus, it's important to keep track of the alignments, town, mafia and neutral, because you can use logic to deduce who is who just in regards to their alignment. Every game consists of 15 players and they are always a jailer, which is always a town role, two town information roles, two town support roles, one town protective role, one town killing role, and a random town role. So that is important to keep in mind. Then there are always three mafia members, one neutral killing role, one neutral evil role, and one neutral benign role. And then to spice things up, there's always any other role. So it could be anything. It could be a second serial killer, it could be a fourth mafia member, it could be a second town killing role, and so on. So this is really hard to track, but it's the only thing that you can actually use for logic. All in all, there are 33 roles at the moment in Town of Salem, and seven of them are unique, which means there cannot be two of these in one match. For example, the Jailer is a unique role, so there cannot be two Jailers in one game. But for example, the Lookout is a non-unique role, so if you are claiming to be a Lookout and someone else as well, that's perfectly fine. Now, I would like to go through all these roles one by one because it is important to know what these roles can actually do in the game. Let's start with the town roles. First of all, we have the bodyguard. It's one of my favorite roles because the bodyguard protects one other person each night. And if the target is attacked, the bodyguard and the attacker will die instead. Second of all, we have the Doctor. It's also a very nice role. Both the Doctor and the Bodyguard are the two town protective roles. The Doctor, of course, heals one person each night, not knowing whether this person is going to be attacked or not. But if this person is going to be attacked, they can prevent them from dying. The Doctor can also heal himself, but only once. Then we have the Escort. The Escort blocks someone from using their ability each night which can be useful, but also can be kind of annoying. Then we have the Investigator, probably my most favorite role in the entire game. The Investigator investigates one other player each night and then gets a clue. The clue is in the form of this player could either be role one, role two, or role three. So you don't get a decisive answer, but you actually get a clue. Next up, we have the most 
important role in the game for the townies, which is the jailer. The jailer will put someone, one other player, to jail each night and then question them anonymously and decide, judging from their answer, whether they want to execute this prisoner or let them live. The lookout looks at the house of one other player each night and if someone visits this player, they get to know it. Next up, we have the mayor. The mayor is <laughs> kind of hidden from the public, um, but he can reveal himself. And if he does so, not only does everyone know that he's a good guy, but he also gets three votes instead of one during the day. So he can definitely um, get someone up on the chopping block. But the downside is that he will probably get killed next night by the mafia. We also have the medium, which is a nice addition because the medium can speak with the dead people, which means that if you get killed night one, you shouldn't just leave the game because it will be boring, but instead you can talk to the medium and still get the intel that you have gathered so far off your chest. Next up we have the retributionist. The retributionist can just resurrect a dead town member, uh, which is quite useful. The sheriff also gathers information, but there's a different to the investigator because the sheriff also clicks on a person, but will get a result in the form of this player is suspicious or not suspicious. There are some details to this because he, for example, cannot see the godfather, but can see the serial killer, something like that. Now we have the spy, which is a fun little role because the spy can listen in to anything that the mafia says at night and also to any private messages that people are sending in this match. There will be no secrets if there's a spy around, but most pro players already know that the spy can do this, so they will never reveal any names in private messages. Next up we have the transporter, which is a rather rare and also, in my opinion, rather useless role. The transporter can switch two people against each other. So if one of them, for example, was targeted during the night, the other one will get attacked instead. Now, I think this is rather stupid because you would have to know both of their roles so that not an innocent person will get killed, plus that your target will get attacked probably during the night. So those are a lot of information that you have to have in order to make your decision. Next up, we have the Vampire Hunter. I will ignore him because in the game mode that I'm playing, there won't be any vampires. So we'll go straight up for the Veteran. The Veteran is a character that can go on alert three times during the night. And if he's on alert, he will kill anyone who visits him. That is good if an evil person tries to kill him, but it's bad if it's just the doctor checking in on him. Uh, next up is the second town killing role, which is the Vigilante. The Vigilante does nothing up until the time that he's fed up and he just shoots someone in the head during the night. If it was a bad person, everything's fine and he gets to live. If it was a nice person, he commits suicide the next night. And those were all the nice roles. Now let's continue with the evil red roles, the Mafia ones. The Godfather is the boss of the Mafia. He gets to decide who gets killed up until the point when every other Mafia member is murdered and only then he will get his own hands dirty. Next up we have the ordinary Mafia member. He is nothing important other than that he is the true killer in the family. Whatever the Godfather says he'll do and he'll be sent out to kill and also to get killed if there's an ambush waiting for him. And then we have all the special roles which are all rather rare. We have for example the Framer. The Framer gets to frame another person each night so they can make another town person for example look as if they were a member of the Mafia. The Forger forges the last will of another person. No matter what they wrote in their last will, the Forger can delete it all and write something else instead. Another extremely useful role for the Mafia is the Janitor. The Janitor can perform three cleanings during the night which means that the person they have cleaned will remain a secret once they die. Their last will will not be revealed, as well as their secret identity. Next up, we have the blackmailer, which is kind of the spy for the mafias. And they can listen in on secret conversations and on private messages. 
They also can make one other person during the day be unable to actually say anything. Then of course we have the consigliere. The consigliere is kind of the <laughs> mafia informative role because they can look at a town player or at a neutral role player and can get to know their secret identity and then inform their fellow mafia players. We also have the consort which is the exact opposite of the escort just that they are working for the mafia. And last but not least, we have the Disguiser, which in my opinion is the most imbalanced role in the entire game. They can choose a target, and if this target dies, they will appear to be them, which is extremely confusing. Those were all the red roles. Now, let's take a look at the gray or neutral roles. Not all of these are bad. Sure, admittedly, some of them are actually evil, some of them are actually killing other players, but some of them are actively trying to support one group or the other. For example, we have the Amnesiac. The Amnesiac is quite useless in the beginning, but once other players are dead, they can select one role from them and assume this role henceforth. That of course means that they could be either good or bad which is why they are here in the neutral road zone. The other neutral benign character is the survivor. The survivor will win the game if he's together with one other group in the end, surviving, as the name suggests. Next up, we have uh, this funny little role, the jester. The jester is neutral evil because he is sowing chaos among the townies. He will do anything to convince them to kill him during the day, which is how he wins. If he gets killed during the night, nothing will happen and he just lost the game. The executioner gets a random target among the players and has to convince the town killing his target is a good idea during the day. If his target gets killed during the night, that means that he turns into the jester. Alright, let's move on towards the neutral killing characters. First of all, we have the Arsonist. The Arsonist gets to douse one player each night in gasoline, and then once he's up for it, he can ignite all the doused players so far, which of course results in the death of said players. Next up, we have the Serial Killer. The Serial Killer, pretty straight and simple, he kills one other player each night. That's it. And last but not least, we have the original Werewolf. The werewolf gets to kill one other player every other night, which sounds like a downgrade from the serial killer, right? But his biggest advantage is that he also gets to kill everyone visiting his target that night. The vampire I will ignore because, as I said, there won't be any vampires in the ranked game. And last but not least, the witch, or actually the least, because I do not like the witch. I have never understood why the witch is important. I have played it only once and didn't really get the concept. The witch can control other players at night, but for that she has to know what this player can do. If it's a killing character or if it's a... No, well, no, it has to be a killing character because she can only kill other people through other people. So you get what I mean. It, it takes a lot of information which the witch usually doesn't have. And that's it. Those are all the roles in the game that we will see. And now I will get back to myself and show you the first and hopefully last round. All right, now that we know how to play the game, I will explain to you the reasoning behind this playlist. Now, I used to really like getting together with my real life friends and play a game of werewolf. I still do, but as with all things in real life, these people just never have time. So you meet with them fewer and fewer times and it's just really frustrating. But this game was a great alternative. You could just log in at any time you wanted. There were always players online willing to play a match with you. Plus the game itself. Each time you have a different role, so each time you have to do something completely differently. Sometimes you have to uh, use logic to deduce who is who, sometimes you have to communicate well, you have to play together with others really well, sometimes you just have to be a really good actor to hide that you are one of the bad guys. So I used to really love this game, as you will probably notice. 
So with this game, it was as with all new games. You kind of lose a round, you win a round, but generally over time you get better because you get to know the game and its features and its mechanics. Um, so I kept winning and winning more often and my statistics improved. And then it happened. I don't know what it was, maybe I did something really bad and karma finally struck me, but one day I started losing and I simply never stopped. I just lost one round after another, one match after the other, and I kept telling myself, okay, let's just do one more match, just, yeah, one more match, it'll be like 30 minutes and then it's over and I'll have finally won another round and then I can go to bed. But no, I just kept losing and losing and losing. Over, I don't know, maybe three, four days in a row I kept losing and I kept going to bed and next morning I got up and said, okay, one quick round, I'll, I'll win this time, but it never happened. So it became kind of a running gag with me and the few people that I knew uh, online that whenever I told them which team I'm on, they knew that that team would lose. Um, so yeah, uh, you, you can't see my statistics here for some reason, but I um, kind of lost so many times that by now I have lost uh, like twice the number of matches that I have won all in all, like 50 to 25 or something like that, I, I don't know. It has actually been three months now that I haven't played this game because I was so frustrated. I absolutely did not understand what I'm doing wrong all of a sudden, so I quit the game. Not for good, because today I returned and I will play this game so long that I will finally win, no matter how long it takes. All right, and you will all be my witnesses. This might become the longest playlist on my channel, the longest playlist in existence, because I might be cursed, but I will do this. I will play one round after the other until I finally win. Okay, let's go. Uh, this is um, actually the, the main screen, like with all free to play games, Oh no, it's actually not free to play, sorry. Uh, I, I got it for free in my um, Humble Monthly bundle, but it's it's actually like two, three euros, something like that, I think. Um, yeah, but this is the main screen. You can customize like your, your little avatar. You can, of course, have uh, like mini transactions. You have several achievements for each and every role. And there are some statistics here, but not the ones that I wanted to show you. Uh, my total rank is 1,102 out of probably 1,103 players. So yeah, we need to do something about this. And usually you start with this combination, normal and classic, that is for the beginners. And you have to solve like 50 games all in all and 10 of them being of this ranked practice. This is a, a totally individual arena, so to speak, in order to be able to get into ranked. And ranked is essentially the same as this, just fewer restrictions and more pro players. Because they all play ranked in order to increase their, you got it, rank. Their online rank, the ELO thingy that I just showed you. Um, so, yeah, lots of experienced players in here and we will probably get obliterated. But, yeah, that's what we're here for, right? Let's get in. <laughs> 